G'day. Another Delrin pup with its very own whoops. And it's really not meant to look like that. I was using a parting tool that was too short. My parting tools have this reinforcing web, I suppose you'd call it, down the blade. Um, makes it hard for them to penetrate any more than the actual diameter that they're supposed to work with. You can see it there at the bottom of the picture. Makes the, the parting tool so much stronger, much more so than some of the cheap ones you buy where it's not there. But it does limit you to how much penetration you have once you go above the diameter of the maximum that's recommended. It's just the part in the center lathe, inch and a quarter drill, 550 RPM. The marks on the drill are just so as I've got an idea how, to, how far to go in, but it starts to screech when it gets to the end of its, uh, as it starts to break through. So I didn't need the marks there anyway. That big hole would have been so much slower to create in the CNC compared with just whacking the drill through in the centre lane. That boring bar is actually a boring bar meant for a boring head for a milling machine. I get them from CTC Tools. For its length it's really quite strong. It's got a 12mm shank but it will actually bore into a 10mm hole I think. which. You know, it's really good. It's very strong for something that will enter a 10mm hole and start boring. Just the finishing cut on the bore. I think it's 2500 RPM we're doing with this. This is the 2mm wide tool, the one that was to blame for the problem. But as you can see, it's it's the code that I wrote for this, I hand wrote. And when I realised I had a problem, I didn't want to rewrite the code. So I just used a different parting tool to part off. Um, if I'd used the cam grooving cycles with the Herka software, it would have been much slower because it would have been the initial grooving cycle to remove the OD, get down to the OD, and then a grooving cycle for each of the other grooves, and that wouldn't have taken care of the chamfer on each end anyway. So I just left it, I'd handwritten it to suit the 2mm, kept using the 2mm, and used the 1.6 which has a much bigger reach for um, the parting off. And that's the finish apart from what the parting tool does. Down the side to put the chamfer on and then in to part it off. I wonder what parting off is called when you don't part off. Here's another look at it. It's side on so you can actually see the grooves being created. It's part of the chamfer. Then the OD, then the groove, then the OD again, next groove. So even though I wrote it by hand, I thought that was probably about as effective a way of doing it as I could come up with. And yes, I did nick that OD when it was travelling across there, but eh. Hey. Finishes up okay, so I didn't worry about it. When the profile goes round to uh, finish the outside, you can't see a mark there, so I went with it. All this for six parts. That was all we needed. But I don't think I'd have wanted to make them in the centre lane. 
Which is why I did them in the uh, CNC, I suppose. And this really does take a bit of belting off. It's, it's hard to know how much to leave on. There's the mess. And when you leave the guard off, it gets all over the workshop. And you do that, of course, to take the video. All right, that's it. Thank you for watching.